Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name's Kristen and today we're getting started on another makeover here at the lake house. We are doing something I've never done before, which is transforming this basic builder grade closet into a custom dry bar for this TV room. This room actually used to be a bedroom, so that's why this closet exists. And we can make better use of this closet by turning it into a dry bar. And I say dry bar because we're not gonna be doing any plumbing and adding sinks and all that. We're just leaving this as a space where we can serve food, you can bring pizza boxes too, you can have snacks and drinks and it will add some extra valuable storage to this space I want to make this closet feel like an extension of this entire room So we're actually gonna be redoing the entire room next But I did want to get started on the closet first So I hope you enjoy watching and I hope this gives you some ideas that you can use in your home If you have a basic builder grade closet like this So if you enjoy watching and find this video helpful Make sure you give it a big thumbs up and hit that like button and let's go ahead and jump right into it Closets like this are actually really fun to work on because you can turn them into whatever you like. As soon as you take those doors down, this could be an extra office space, a reading nook, or a bar area like this. I went on Pinterest and found so many amazing examples of how you can turn a closet into a really gorgeous bar. I'm taking all of these pictures as inspiration and trying to create a space of my own. I love this blue, gray, green color. It already works with my existing decor around my home, so I think this style is gonna be perfect. I'm pulling most of my inspiration from these three images. I like the color scheme. I like that all three of them have the walls, the trim, and the cabinets painted all the same color. So you get this seamless integrated look and that's exactly what I'm going for. All right, let's start out by opening up this closet and taking down these sliding doors. They're just on this little metal track so you should be able to just pop them right out. Wow, well that made a big difference. It feels so much bigger in here already. That was pretty easy to pop those doors off. Now we're gonna take down this rod because we won't be needing a hanging rod in here and that way we'll just be left with that upper shelf. Okay, so obviously to turn this closet into a kitchenette kind of dry bar, we need some base cabinets. And I've been spending all morning figuring out how many base cabinets I would need, which sizes to do wall-to-wall -wall base cabinets in this closet. I went on the IKEA website to use their IKEA kitchen planner to try and figure out how many affordable base cabinets I would need to go all the way across this closet. This was supposed to be just a small little project, but even just doing this was gonna cost about $1,000. I decided to go to the thrift store just to see what they have. Sometimes they have some affordable cabinets and I obviously want to do this all on a budget. And I ended up finding literally the perfect full size cabinet for this closet. I can't even believe it. This opening width here was 81 inches and this is 81 inches. So it slid right in. This entire base cabinet was just $175, which is crazy because one little single base cabinet with no countertop is like $125. So getting a full wall-to-wall -wall cabinet piece thrifted for $175 is a total steal. Trust me, you can save so much money by going to the thrift store first. Number one tip. Before we get around to refinishing this cabinet, we have to pick a paint color for the walls. The wall color is gonna be the same color as the cabinet so that it's all super blended and seamless and looks really monochromatic and built in. So for paint color in here, I've really always pictured this room being a dusty but deep green gray blue. The trick to finding muted color palettes is actually looking within the gray tones. If you go to the paint shop, shift your eyes towards the gray section and the grays will always have blue grays, green grays, purple grays. They will have all the different shades so you can pick a more muted color of the color you're looking for. I went to Benjamin Moore and picked up two samples that are very, very similar. One is called Intrigue and the other one is called Carolina Gull. I like to use these little paint samples to actually paint little pieces of paper like this so you can stick them up wherever you want, move them around, put them on every single wall to really get a better idea of what the paint color looks like. So this one here is Intrigue 
and this one here is Carolina Gull. And Carolina Gull has a little bit more of that sage that I normally use in the house, but I want to do something with a slight difference in this room. Intrigue is a little bit deeper, has a little bit more blue in it, and I just love the rich color of it. I'm gonna keep all these paint samples up on the wall overnight so I can really get a sense of what the color looks like at night, what it looks like with lamps on, what it looks like in the daylight, and then we can finalize our decision. All right, it's the next day and I'm headed back out to pick up the official paint can so we can get painting today. I am going with the color Intrigue. I think it's gonna be really nice. So I'm gonna pick up two cans of paint, one in an eggshell finish for the walls and one in a satin finish for the trim, the shelving and the cabinet. When you're painting the wall and the trim the same color, start painting the trim first and then work on the wall. So I'm gonna be using this Benjamin Moore pearl finish. This is their satin finish. So it's gonna have a little bit more of a sheen to it, which is gonna help make all those details stand out against the wall. Doing the trim first just allows you to be a little bit messier with your painting. You don't have to be super precise because you're gonna be painting over that wall anyway. So it is easier to start here. I love the look of painting the trim and the walls the same color. It just makes a small space look so much bigger. All right, so for the walls, we're using the exact same color, Intrigue, but in an eggshell finish. If you're ever painting a wall, I always suggest starting with your edges first. So use a little angle brush and cut all of your corners and edges so you can roll that paint on so much faster. All right, we're done with the painting for now. Now it's time to add some detail to this back wall. I wanna make this whole built-in bar area look really elegant, and I think the best way of doing that is with picture frame molding. I got this pre-made picture frame molding off of Amazon. I'll have it all linked down below because this stuff is genius. They come in different sizes, so you can really pick out which size you need for your room. I'm gonna install them just about here, so they're gonna be right on top of the countertop, and then we're gonna be painting the trim pieces in the same color as the closet. So it's all gonna look really integrated, and you won't have these white rectangles just popping out of the wall. <laughs> So because these are not really centered, every in-between spot is gonna be a little bit different, but I'm gonna try and make them as even as possible. So this last one will have two large rectangles like this. I think that will help even it all out. And then to finish it off, I'm just gonna fill all of these tiny nail holes and then paint all the molding to match the wall. Today is cabinet day! This is the next step to refinish this piece. Every time I'm refinishing any kind of furniture piece, if it's wood or laminate or an Ikea piece, I always use Zinsser Bullseye 123 primer. This adheres to like anything without sanding. So you can paint tile, metal, wood, and this will work wonders. So always use a primer like this before painting, but just to rough up the surface a little bit, I'm gonna go in with a little bit of sanding with my Orbital Sander. Mm -hmm. 
This is actually the first time I've ever used an orbital sander and it's amazing. I get it now. I get why people are using these. I used to do everything by hand and I got this done in seconds. So I highly recommend using this if you're doing any sanding project. Now that we got off some of that shine, you can go in with the primer. So this is just really gonna give you a good base to paint on and allow that paint to adhere to the wood really well. I'm only gonna be painting the front of these cabinets. I'm not doing the inside just for time's sake. So if you're doing the same, just have it propped up on something. I'm just using a little stool here so I can get all of the edges. I allowed the primer to dry and now I'm using the satin finish to paint the cabinet. Satin paint has a little bit more durability to it than eggshell. So the higher the sheen, the more durability. So that's better for cabinet use and things that are gonna be a little bit more high traffic. I'm using a foam roller to put the paint on because foam rollers are the best way to get a super smooth finish. Because I couldn't get a brand new countertop cut to size in time, I thought we might as well do a budget friendly DIY and just wrap the existing countertop with this marble contact paper. I find that countertop contact paper holds up really well. It holds up to cleaning and heat and honestly, this won't really get too much use. It's just really used for a surface. We're not gonna be cooking on this or anything like that. So I think this is gonna work out really well. I love how this looks with the wall color. It's like super high contrast. So I think it's gonna look amazing. This was very easy to install. All you need is a squeegee or some kind of card. I'm using a little gift card here just to get all the bubbles out and make sure it lays flat. And just like that, we have a marble countertop. Look how good this looks. This is probably my favorite veining style. I like this so much more than the one that I've used in the past. Wow, it adheres really nicely. There's no bubbles. It's super smooth and oh, it just looks so good with this color. Now I'm gonna add some hardware to our drawers and cabinet doors. Right now we don't have any hardware, there's no holes that I can install any, so I'm just gonna be doing that myself, measuring holes and installing these little antique brass poles. I already had a bunch of these from a previous project, so might as well use what I already have. I'm thinking we might be able to finish up this project today. I'm so excited. I love the way it's coming together. I just can't wait to see it done. Now we're gonna be adding in something I'm super excited about. These gorgeous wall sconces. Wall sconces just make anything look custom and beautiful and bright and elegant and that's exactly what I'm going after. So I got these off of Amazon. I just love this antique brass up against this color. It's just gonna make everything pop and we're not gonna be hardwiring these to the wall. We're just gonna be screwing them in and actually just using a little rechargeable light bulb. This has a little flashlight mode or you can put it on lamp mode and then it just works as a normal light bulb. How genius is this? So that's really gonna add a nice pop of light to the closet. I'm gonna do one on either side kind of about there just to kind of brighten up this space and make it look really really pretty this isn't any kind of special wall sconce it's just a regular hardwired wall sconce but when you install it you just disregard all of the wiring and just screw this plate onto the wall and shove all the wires into this back plate so you don't see them Now I wanna add some organization to this cabinet. So I'm gonna be putting in some drawer liners across the drawers just so that we have a cleaner, fresh look inside and installing these little adjustable dividers. Now ideally this middle section would have been great for some kind of mini fridge or wine fridge, but for now I just put one of these wine racks in here. I don't have any nearby power, so this is gonna to have to do for now. It's gonna be a great storage opportunity for all of the bar essentials. 
This upper shelf is great for extra storage. So to make it more useful and make it a little bit more decorative, I'm bringing in these large baskets. These are gonna be great for holding the extra throw blankets that are in this space or extra pillows, remotes, whatever gets laid around and becomes clutter can be stored away in these baskets. It's gonna add some warmth, some texture, and it's gonna help balance out the visual weight of this bar. Let's get this little beverage snack center all stocked up and styled so I can show you guys this huge transformation. Anything on your surfaces should be decorative, so you can turn food into a decorative opportunity by putting them in pretty jars and making the color palette work with your space. Choosing cookies and nuts really helps bring together this color palette. Okay, now that this space is done, I wanna do a little last minute reveal for Christian because he hasn't seen it fully complete. He did see the paint color go up and the molding and the cabinet go in. And when he saw that, he was already shook. I wish I just kept it all a secret. But now that he's out of the house, we have it all decorated, the lighting's up, it's fully stocked, and I think he's really gonna love it. Once he gets home, we'll do a little reveal to show him our new and improved snack bar. Are you excited? Mm-hmm. Me too. I think you're really gonna like it. On the count of three, mm -hmm. you can open your eyes. One, two, three. Wow. Well, you didn't put snacks in I here. I stocked ready the whole thing. Literally, look at the whole thing. This is the oh, bar section. How cool is that? Wine. So we have sparkling water, all types of wine. Mm -hmm. That looks so good. Don't eat all the cookies mm -hmm. all at once. Cute. Imagine it's like movie nights, hanging out. We can have pizza drop off here. You can make drinks, snacks. We have dishes. Like it's literally everything. Way more functional. Got better use of the space. Yes. Than what it was before. It feels like this was always meant to be there. Can you even believe this used to just be a boring old sliding closet? I just love the way this makeover came together. The warm and cool tones together, the molding, the lighting, the DIY thrift flip that came in so handy. Anyways, I hope this gave you some ideas that you can use in your home. If you have some extra closet space or an unused little nook in your home, turn it into something that would be functional for you and your family. Let me know down below in the comments what you guys think of this makeover and if this is something that you would try in your home. And like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I do wanna take this makeover into the family room here and really extend the design all throughout the space. So I think it could look really amazing. So stay tuned for that on my channel. If you enjoyed watching and found this video helpful, make sure you give it a big thumbs up and hit that like button. And make sure you guys are subscribed to my channel so you don't miss those upcoming videos. Click that red subscribe button down below and make sure you guys have my notifications turned all the way on so you're first to see the next video. Love you guys so much and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.